بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ مرفی زدنی علماء صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمدللہ رب العالمین The topic of this lecture is important concepts of representation of data An important advice for me and for everyone We should be fair to others Statistics It is a subject that deals with collecting, organizing, summarizing, presenting and analyzing data. The collection, organization and analysis of numerical information are all parts of the subject called statistics. Data Data means pieces of numerical and other informations. Qualitative variable A variable is qualitative if it is not possible for it to take a numerical value. Quantitative variable A variable is quantitative if it can take a numerical value. Continuous variable Continuous means measurable uh, quantities. Any quantitative variable which can take any value in a given range is continuous. For example, time, if t lies between 1 and uh, 10, then t can take any value from 1 and 10, whether the value is whole number or uh, decimal, like t can take 0.5, sorry, t can take 1.2, 1.5, 2.3, 9.8 and so on and integer values as well 7 8 discrete variable discrete means countable quantities any quantitative variable which has clear steps between uh, its possible uh, values is discrete like integers like number of heads on a when a fair coin is tossed 10 times so 0 1 and so on for example x if x is discrete so it can take any value from 0 to 10 when a when fair when a fair coin is tossed 10 times so x means number of heads so we can have no head we can have two head we can have all 10 heads so x is integer meaning x is discrete countable quantities t is continuous x is discrete t is measurable and x is countable that's the meaning of continuous variable and discrete variable diagrams for ungrouped data to represent ungrouped data well uh, we have two diagrams to represent ungrouped data in our syllabus number one is stem and leaf diagram in short you can say this is stem plot and box and whisker plot in short this is also known as box plot or five number summary stem and leaf diagram we call this in short we call this stem plot and box and whisker plot box and whisker plot the other name of this diagram is uh, five number summary or in short we can call this as box plot
stem plot uh, the advantage of a stem plot is it shows all the data the original information has retained in this diagram and this is the only diagram in which the original data has retained and you lost your original data in all the other diagrams so when data is small then stem and leaf diagram is a suitable way to represent the data because it shows all the data and it tells the type of the distribution whether the distribution is symmetrical or non symmetrical box and whisker plot or five number summary or in short box plot this five number means lowest observation q1 median q3 and highest observation these five observations are known as five number summary advantage of box plot box plot uh, tells the type of distribution like the distribution is symmetrical or non symmetrical it shows the scatterness as well like the uh, like the observations uh, are more scattered or less scattered from their mean high range means more variation and low range means less variation there are three different types of box plot number one positively skewed when median is closer to q1 then the box plot is known as positively skewed like this and when median is closer to q3 then the box plot is known as the negatively skewed and when median is at the center then box plot is symmetrical the distribution is symmetrical and range the formula of range is highest observation minus lowest observation so we have two diagram to represent on group data number one is stem plot and number two box plot is stem plot uh, i told you stem plot shows all the data it shows all the data number one number two it provides an easy way of organizing data these are the advantages a way of organizing the values that gives some information about the patterns within the data like data is symmetrical or non symmetrical value is split into two parts namely a stem and a leaf this is stem and this is leaf leaf is always single digit we can have uh, two or three or more digits in a stem if data is large a stem diagram is not the best method of displaying data because we need to use other and so we use uh, we need to use the other methods and the best advantage of this diagram is it shows all the data we will discuss a uh, histogram and cumulative later i'm just focusing on stem plot and a uh, box plot box plot Uh, we can convert a five number summary into a useful diagram called a box plot box whisker plot or just box plot five number summary i already have told you five number summary means the median the lower quartile the upper quartile the minimum value and the maximum value skewed distribution well if a distribution is not symmetrical this is the symmetrical distribution and this is the non symmetrical distribution so if a distribution is not symmetrical like this then it is said to be skewed or to have skewness so this distribution is skewed and when distributions are symmetrical then they have zero skewness since this distribution is symmetrical about mean we have equal area on left side and right side and this is the line of symmetry so this distribution is symmetrical and this has zero skewness this distribution is non symmetrical and we have mode here at the lower side the peak is here so mode is here and we have long stretch tail towards a uh, higher values so this distribution is positively skewed so distribution is certainly not symmetrical this one there is a tail which stretches towards higher values another method method of assessing the skewness of a distribution is to use quartiles there are two method to understand the skewness if we have uh, a long tail stretches towards higher values 
then distribution is positively skewed. This is the first way. And the other way is this. If Q1, sorry, if uh, median is close to Q1, right now median is at the center. In this case, median is at the center and we have equal, uh, uh, almost equal, but this one is shorter and this one is longer. So this, you can say this one is approximately symmetrical or almost symmetrical. When we have equal uh, magnitude of whiskers and when median is exactly at the center, then the distribution is perfectly symmetrical and that will follow the normal distribution. But this uh, box plot is approximately almost symmetrical because we have a shorter whisker here and longer whisker here. So this is approximately symmetrical. So when uh, median is at the center, when uh, we have uh, equal area on right side and left side, then uh, the distribution is perfectly symmetrical. And for that distribution, mean, median, mode, all are equal. Mean is this line, mean is here, median is here, and, and uh, mode is also here. And see, median is at the center and we have equal lengths of whiskers. So this distribution is perfectly symmetrical. This has zero skewness. This is the positively skewed. So in positively skewed distribution, the fall of the distribution is pulled in positive direction. Here. Well, uh, when you can understand this concept through this, uh, this thing, the box of this distribution is here. So to understand the positively skewed distribution, you should uh, look at the uh, median. If median is close to Q1, then the distribution is positively skewed. So in positively skewed distribution, we have two things. Q2 is closer to Q1 and we have long stretch tail on right side. So there are two ways to identify the positively skewed distribution. Number one, median. If median is close to Q1, then the distribution is positively skewed. And the other way is if we have long stretch tail uh, towards the higher side, then uh, we can say that the distribution is positively skewed. Positively skewed means low averages. And negatively skewed is the opposite of positively skewed. Then median will be here. So when median is close to Q3, then the distribution is said to be negatively skewed. And we have long stretch tail over here. So there are two ways to understand this concept. I usually use a, a median. I observe median. If median is close to Q3, I can easily identify the distribution is negatively skewed. And when median is close to Q1, then I would say this is the positively skewed. And when median is exactly at the center, then I would say that distribution is perfectly symmetrical and uh, with equal uh, length of whiskers. Well, uh, we use box plot to identify the type of distribution. When we have just one box, now this is very important. Now this concept is extremely important. When we have just one box, then how would we uh, check the distribution? How would we comment on the distribution? So when we have just one box, then we observe the median. Since median is approximately at the center, not exactly at the center, so we can say that this box plot gives an immediate impression of an approximately symmetrical distribution. Since median is not exactly at the center, therefore you should say this box gives an immediate impression of an approximately symmetrical distribution. This distribution is approximately symmetrical. But this distribution is not approximately symmetrical because in this distribution, Q2 is close to Q1. So when Q2 is close to Q1, that means the positively skewed distribution. So this box gives an immediate impression of a positively skewed distribution. So when we have just one box, then we state the type of distribution. But when we have two boxes, like in this case, then we have to give 
टू कॉमेंट्स वी यूजली गिव टू कॉमेंट्स एंड वन कॉमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू मीडियम एंड वन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू रेंज सो वेन एवर यू हैव टू बॉक्स मेक श्योर यू कॉमेंट एंड द टाइप ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू मीडियम एंड विद रिस्पेक्ट टू देयर रेंजेस सो वेन एवर यू से विद रिस्पेक्ट टू मीडियम देन यू हैव टू से ऑन एवरेज मस्ट राइट ऑन एवरेज so the first comment is according to median and this thing this labeling will tell you the quantity so length of insects in centimeter so you would say y since the median of y is greater than the median of x so you would say y has longer insects on average in other words you can say on average y has longer insects than x this is the first comment with respect to their median now the second comment would be with, uh, uh, with respect to their range the range is in fact so y has longer range than x so you would say y has longer range than x or you can say uh, more spread in lens of y type y insects than type x insects more spread another example the box plots show the distributions of marks obtained by a class in english and in mathematics comment on the distributions of marks now you can comment in two ways there should be two comments number one they ask just comment so we can just comment according to their ranges but if they ask comments on the distribution of marks then you have to give two comments i am giving two comments number one i am giving comments with respect to median c the median of math marks is greater than the median for english marks so you can say on average students have performed well in math test than in english test on average students have performed well in math than in english exams range range is greater in english so up you would say more variation in english marks than in math marks or you can say marks are more spread in english than in math english marks have a wider range than math marks or you can say marks are spread out in english than in math so this these are the ways to uh, uh comments uh, to comments the type of distributions uh in box plots now the next topic is outliers outliers means abnormal data values so abnormal data values are known as outliers sometimes unusually high or low values occur in a set of data and those values are known as abnormal values there may be good reason for these unusual results but quite often they occur because an error was made when the data were recorded to investigate extreme values you would use the mean and standard deviation or the quartiles and interquartile range we usually use interquartile range so to uh, check to investigate those values we have to uh, use interquartile range and we have to get the boundaries for the data and after uh, outside that boundaries outside uh, those boundaries the data values are known as outliers this is the upper boundary and this is the lower boundary and outside this boundary we have two observations so these are two outliers so if any data value would lie outside this uh, these two boundaries then those that value or those values would be considered at as outliers and how would we get uh, these boundaries the formula for these boundaries is uh, are here the formulas are here number 1 for upper boundary use this formula q3 plus 1.5 iqr this is the formula for the upper boundary and for lower boundary use this formula q1 minus 1.5 iqr
सी दिस इज द आई क्यू आर सो लोअर बाउंड अपर बाउंड्री इज एटी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव एंड लोअर बाउंड्री इज फिफ्टी फाइव पॉइंट फाइव सो टू ऑब्जर्वेशन आर आउट साइड फ्राम दीज टू बाउंड्रीज सो दीज टू ऑब्जर्वेशन आर कंसिडर्ड एज आउटलाइज सो आउटलाइज मीन्स एब नॉर्मल डेटा वैल्यूज अनयूजल डेटा वैल्यूज Now let me uh, explain histogram and cumulative, and then we will go to understand uh, these solutions of important questions. Diagrams for for uh, group data for continuous group data. for ungrouped data we had done we have uh, we just have done uh, two diagrams box plot and stem plot and for continuous uh, group data uh, we have two diagrams number one histogram and number two cumulative frequency graph uh, we use histogram uh, to check two things advantages of histogram histogram basically tell us two things number one the modal class we can easily get the modal class from histogram these are the advantages of histogram so from histogram we can easily get the modal class and number 2 we can uh, understand the type of distribution whether the distribution is skewed or symmetrical labeling uh, on horizontal axis we label class boundaries and on vertical axis we take the frequency densities cumulative frequency graph we use cumulative frequency graph to get two important things number 1 median number 2 iqr and number 3 percentiles and number 4 we can estimate the uh any value like any value like for example uh we can estimate uh, uh, uh for example like this if we have this is cumulative frequency graph if, if we have uh, marks here and if we have number of students are here so we can estimate the number of students who have got uh more than 70 marks so we can estimate uh, the uh, quant i mean anything from uh, uh, cumulative frequency graph so cumulative frequency graph is a really good way to estimate the things from graph well uh, graph the word graph means either draw cumulative frequency curve or either draw cumulative frequency polygon you have two options either go for curve or polygon curve means like this and polygon means join the corresponding point by means of smooth uh, sorry by means of straight lines uh, the labeling for horizontal axis for both the diagrams are same we uh, take class boundaries on horizontal axis either uh, both for histogram and cumulative and we take cumulative frequency on vertical axis for cumulative frequency graph and we take frequency densities on vertical axis for histogram well histogram a bar graph which represents continuous data number 1 bars have no space between them area of each bar proportional to frequency when group frequency distribution contains continuous data one of the most common form of graphical display is a histogram in a histogram if all bars equal uh, bars equal width then height is proportional to frequency when a group frequency distribution has an equal class then we take frequency density on vertical axis Uh, we have two types of data uh, group data number 1 discrete and number 2 continuous marks means discrete and length means continuous because marks are countable and length means measurable so this is the discrete so whenever we have discrete we go for class boundaries and this is the continuous so we don't need to form class boundaries we form class boundaries when we have different values here and here and we basically form class boundaries to make these two values same 
now we have same values here we already have same values so there is no need for class boundaries you can consider this as class boundaries Uh, this question can come in your exam. Uh, explain why mean and standard deviation are estimates rather than the precise values. You know, we use these formulas for mean and for variance or standard deviation. This is for variance. Sigma f square, sigma f. We just did this in uh, first lecture. And this is for mean. So this x means class centers. Basically, whenever we find uh, mid values so mid values basically uh, representative of the intervals they are estimates so individual values are not known so mid values have been taken as representative of the intervals like for example this interval is 1 to 10 this is from 11 to 20 this is from 21 to 29 or and so on and the frequency is 5 7 and 8 so the mid value will be 5.5 so we are considering that 5.5 is repeated five times we are estimating we are assuming which is not true exactly because there must be other values which will be repeating here we are assuming that 15.5 is repeating seven times just 15.5 is repeating seven times which is not right so whenever we use uh, this formula and we take class uh, centers or mid values then this x is representative of the class interval and uh, this x uh, is basically estimate so let me write this here because the use of class centers is an approximation That therefore we get estimates we don't get precise values since the class centers are approximation therefore we we can only get the estimated answer I will explain this uh, concept in in a question inshallah in a question of uh, this type well uh, number one we have to construct the stem plot now how to construct this stem plot this is very simple uh, the data is in three digits so you should assume that this is also in three digits so you need to uh, take zero common see we have zero in all, in the whole data so you can just uh, make a scale or take a scale use a scale just take a 10 common you will mention that 10 in the unit later so you should assume this data is 57 45 31 this is just 1 or 0 1 so the lowest observation is 0 1 and the highest observation is 57 let me write this here 0 1 is the lowest and the highest is 57 this is a stem and this is leaf the section for leaf and this is the section for the stem so 0 to 5 this is the range of values for stem 0 1 2 3 4 5 and for leaf no problem uh, you can just directly just take cancel the numbers and list the numbers here now how to uh, make this stem plot number one first write the range of values of a stem by considering the smallest and largest values of the data now the smallest is 0 and the largest is 57 now cancel this value and write one here 44 66 8 100 means this is just 10 basically so 0 13 and so on in the key you have to mention this thing 1 slash 0 means 100 because the scale is 10 these values are nearest to 10 so 1 0 means 100 meaning you will read this value as 200 meaning 3 slash 1 means 310 
now how how will you get a median lower quartile and upper quartile i told you the formulas in my first lecture the formula for median is n plus 1 upon 2th observation this is the formula for median for ungrouped data and for odd number of observations and in fact we use the same formula for even number of observations as well so we have 27 observations when you will put 27 here it will become 28 28 upon 2 is 14 so check the 14th observation 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 this is the 14th observation so you will read this as 160 dollar make sure you must write the key with unit lower quartile this is the odd number of observation these are the odd number of observations so the formula for lower quartile will be q1 1 upon you can write this as n plus 1 upon fourth observation so 28 upon fourth which is seventh observation this is the seventh observation and for upper quartile use this formula 3 upon 4 n plus 1 the observation 21st just check the 21st observation and interquartile range is q3 minus q1 well upper boundary for outliers this is for outliers and the formula for upper boundary is this q3 1.5 iqr and the formula for the lower boundary is q1 minus 1.5 iqr so the upper boundary is this and lower boundary is this now check the outliers so bit outside this range 35 and 315 so this is the outlier this is outside 35 and these are two outliers because these are greater than 335 315 so there are three outliers this was the last part an outlier is defined as uh, 1.5 times above the upper quartile this means q3 plus 1.5 iqr and 1.5 times below the lower quartile this means q1 minus 1.5 iqr which is here and here so we have found the boundaries for outliers and there are three outliers list the outliers means these are three outliers now you can uh, view this solution and you can take the screenshot short of the solution now Now we have this data and we have uh, this is the data for history exam and uh, this is for physics now number one we have to arrange this data in ascending order like this and then we have to find five information the lowest observation the highest observation median q1 and q3 since data is odd in number so the formula of median is n plus one upon two with observation so since we have 13 observations 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so 14 upon 2 which means 7th observation when data is arranged in ascending order 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this is the median and lower quartile the formula for lower quartile is 1 upon 4 n plus 1th observation that should be 3.5th observation 3.5th means the average of third and fourth this is the third and this is the fourth so their average will be 33 10.5th observation is Q3. 10.5th means the average of 10th and 11th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the average of these two will be 50. Now we have to uh, draw box plot. And, and make sure uh, draw all the diagrams uh, with pencils. Always use pencil for diagrams. Now how will you draw a box plot? This is so simple. Must label the horizontal axis. This is the first important thing. And you can start your dial, you can start your horizontal line from 10. Because the lowest observation of both the data is uh, the lowest is 27 here and the lowest is 17. So you can start your box from 10. 
you don't need to mention zero and jag line here if you want you can now mark a dot i mean mark the lowest observation the lowest observation for physics is uh, 17 this is the way to draw a box this is 17 so mark 17 here and this distance is 3 centimeter so we whenever we draw a box we keep this distance 3 centimeter this must be at least 3 centimeter and this is the best way to draw a box plot always keep this distance 3 centimeter the distance of this point from this axis must be 3 cm this is 1 cm one box 2 3 now this is 17 the q1 of physics is uh, 28 now mark 28 here the distance of 28 from this horizontal line is 3 cm then mark median this is the median then mark the upper quartile and then mark the highest observation now make the box through q1 and q3 this is the box this is q1 and this is q3 this is q3 and this is q1 mark i mean label the median this is median and when you will draw whiskers make sure you will start whiskers from q3 and q1 the width of box must be 2 cm this distance must be of 3 cm and the width of the box must be of 2 cm these are the standards and if you will use these standards you will uh, uh, make a, you will be able to make a proper box see this diagram is uh, looking very good this is really good so uh, this is 2 cm 2 cm 2 cm the width of box is 2 and this whiskers part this part this could be of 2 cm and could be of 1 cm it's your choice you have option you can make this length as of 2 cm of length 2 or you can make this of 1 cm I usually make 1 cm so this is the box plot make sure these whisk whiskers must not enter into the box these whiskers must start from Q3 and Q1 and if you observe this box plot see median is close to Q1 so this is positively skewed now for history uh, you have to uh, label you have to mark the lowest observation 27 which is 27 at 6 cm distance from horizontal line this horizontal axis this distance is 3 cm and this distance is 6 cm the double of this distance now mark label uh, mark uh, Q1, then mark median, and then mark uh, Q3, and then uh, mark the highest observation. So this is the box for history exam of 2 cm width. These are the whiskers. Now you have to compare these two. Their medians are same. So on average, both I mean, students have, uh, have got same marks. And their ranges, uh, physics have larger range than history. So more variation in physics marks than in history marks. Physics marks are more spread out than history marks. Or you can say a more variation in physics marks than in history marks. They are just one difference, which could be seen uh, from the diagram. stem plot the lens of the diagonals in meters of nine most popular flat screen tvs and nine most popular conventional tvs are uh, shown below represent this information on a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram this is the back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram this is the stem leaves for conventional and for flat so flat screen are here conventional are here and how to uh, 
construct how to make this if, uh, a stem plot. This is so simple, just check the lowest and highest observations. The lowest observation is 0 0.65 and the highest observation is 1.07. So you just need to start, you just need to ignore the decimal. You just assume that the data is of like this type, 85, 94, 91, and so on. Just ignore the decimal. So write six, the smallest observation, 0 0.65, so write six here, and 10 is here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, how will you uh, make a uh, stem for conventional? Now, 0 0.69, so write nine here. Nine here. Let's suppose nine here. Then point six five. Five is here. Eight five is here. Point seven seven here. Point seven four here. Six seven is here, and so on. And at the end, you have to uh, write the numbers in ascending order. First, write the numbers uh, in the given way, and then write the numbers in ascending order. We were getting a 975. So just erase 975 and write 579. Make sure your stem must be in ascending order. Ascending in this way, ascending in this way. This is our flat screen. And the key is very important. So 671. 6 slash 71 means. Now first explain this thing. This means 0.76 meter of flat screen TV. And this means 0 0.71 meter of conventional TVs. And you all know how to get median and quartiles. I'm leaving this part. Mean and standard deviation is simple. You know the formulas. This is the formula for mean. And this is the formula for standard deviation. I have done this thing in uh, my first lecture. Measure of uh, central tendency and spread. So you can understand this concept from my first lecture. Now I will discuss uh, more questions in my next lecture. An important advice for me and for everyone, be honest. We should be honest. Good luck and Allah Hafiz.